managing shopping lists, items needed, items missed, and the costs associated with that has never been simple. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and today all of that changes with the ultimate shopping list. You're going to be able to quickly create brand new shopping lists simply by selecting items. You're going to be able to save the list, mark those items that have been received, navigate to previous and save your items. We'll also create new lists. And best of all, we're going to do all this from scratch right here, right now. It's going to be an incredible training. So let's get started. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic and fun training, the ultimate shopping list. We all go shopping, we've all missed items, we all need items that we forgotten. The ultimate shopping list is gonna help you with all of that and a whole lot more. In fact, you're gonna be able to create these applications and the list so fast, it is lightning fast. We're gonna be able to locate items by category, by subcategory, selecting on those items, adding them to the list, selecting on an item once it has been completed and paid for. We are also going to keep track of the cost, the list total, the purchase total. We'll be able to save lists, add new lists. We're going to be able to print a list. We're going to be able to navigate to previous lists or next list. And I got a whole lot more in store for you. In fact, we're gonna create all this from scratch right here today. If you like these trainings, I create these each and every Tuesday. All you need to do is click on the notification icon bell along with the subscription button, and that'll ensure that you get these trainings alerted each and every Tuesday. I also create trainings every single Saturday for VBA beginners. So if you're new to VBA or you'd like a refresher course, every Saturday I create a brand new beginner's training. And so you wanna make sure to grab that too if you would like. And don't forget, you can comment below. I'll respond to each and every comment. I am super happy to bring these to you. In fact, I'm not only gonna create this shopping list, I'm gonna do a whole lot more than that for those members who are YouTube silver members or are patreon members I create an additional training each and every week called the feature fix or focus and that means I add brand new features for example this one I'm gonna be adding a mini dashboard I'm gonna be adding the ability to remove items I'm going to be able to add lots of different things and they're also based on your ideas so if you have an idea something you want to see in this training I'm gonna add your feature or I'm gonna focus on your specific area that you want me to focus on or i'm going to fix something that may have been missed in the original training so all that happens on patreon or youtube silver go ahead and click the button below and we'll get you signed up and of course that also includes hundreds of other trainings of previously updated applications so you'll have a whole library that you have way beyond youtube and that's of course a free workbook download and an additional training so i hope to see you there on patreon or youtube silver all right let's get started with this training i'm going to go over a brief overview of exactly what this application is we're going to build then we're going to build it together basically we have to create a brand new shopping list we can then select categories any category for example meats and seafood beef maybe we want to select on a beef and it's going to add that to the list if we click on a button again you're going to see it adds the quantity so lean ground beef the more we click on it it simply adds the number we can also select from item here so we can also just type in re and it's going to add in whatever we want so we can also select items from the list here so we have two options for that we would put in a market name here so we can save that and then we can also add in a date so very simply we'll put in a long date and then some notes here that's it all we have to do to create that shopping list if we have selected items we've put them in our cart or we've already purchased them we can keep track of them here and then all we need to do is just save our list and that gets saved up we can look up previous list by using the previous and back to the next list we can easily display that so very very easy to work with we can add items to a previously saved list so that's very easy we just need to save it it is relatively straightforward and that's why i'm really excited to bring it to you because i'm going to walk you through every step on how to design this incredible application in fact we're going to get started right away on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this sample and i'm going to drag it over to my other screen and i've got a blank worksheet here now this worksheet let's take a quick look at it this is where we're going to build our shopping list it's zoomed in a little bit i've got a database of shopping lists those are previously created shopping list here so we have a list id which is unique to every single list we've got that market the date notes the total and the purchase total now the list total 
means basically all the items that you have in your list. The purchase totals are those that you've purchased. So we can keep track of both of those. Then we have an items. Now this is basically a database of all items. Of course, with 627 items, I hope that helps you. Of course, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below, look for the word download, and I'll make sure to get that to you. And then we have the list items database. Now this list items database is all the items on the given shopping list. So for example, for list ID one, shopping list one, we have these items and there are also more down here for one. So they can be in any order. These are for items list two. So we're gonna be going over that. And then three, so we have the data already. Let's go ahead and start designing this sheet. It's gonna be relatively quick because this is not a large application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those first two columns, we're gonna keep them as admin. So I'm gonna color them gray. And I also want a title here up the top. So we're gonna increase column one here a little bit. And I want that to be called our shopping list. I like the looks of it. I could easily type it in, but I'm just going to use text box here. I'm gonna call this ultimate shopping list. So in capital is ultimate shopping list list on a previous training i missed the r in work order and i was staring at that the entire time i didn't see the misspelling so you will see misspellings when i create these live hopefully not too many so there's no fill on that here and we'll do no outline on that also i want to set a font here we'll go with adlem display so i'll type that in adlem display and then 33 on that also we'll extend that all the way over to let's say j around here we will set the color. I've got some colors here that we'll be working with, some saved colors. Actually not the fill color, but we'll use a text fill color here. I also want to give it a little bit of an effect. We'll do a shadow to make it stand out. And we will also do a bevel on that here, not that shadow. The shadow on this should be uh, this shadow right here. Okay, and we can get rid of anything else. The other effects, we don't need that uh, reflection there, so we can get rid of that. Okay, okay, I like the way that that looks relatively simple. We're gonna get rid of those grid lines. We're gonna add a background to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the page layout. In the background here, I'm gonna select from that. So we're gonna select from file. And I've got one saved here called background. So we'll insert that. And that's gonna give us a nice background that we can work with. We won't need the grid lines, but they might be helpful for just a little bit. So now what I would like to do is we're going to keep a row two. This is where our button sets are gonna be. In column D, I'm gonna put category in here. So in all caps, category. I want the list of those categories right here. I want the subcategories to go in here, subcategory. And I want items. Now items are gonna be two columns. So we're gonna merge and center this. So we're gonna do home and then merge and center. I want those all to be actually a little bit uh, big. So we'll do the bold on that here. And then what we're gonna do is gonna give a format. So I'm gonna use control one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the fill. And I've got some saved colors here. So we'll do fill effects. And I'm gonna use this green to this light green here. So I've got them saved and we're gonna click okay and then okay, we can also center those and bolt them. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like the way that looks. We'll add some borders all the way around here, and that's pretty good for this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna skip column H. In column I, I wanna put some information here. So I wanna put the market in. So here's the market name, and then next to that in J is gonna be our field. Below that, I want the date field, and below that, I want the notes field. Now below that, I wanna put enter and item to add to list. And this is going to be a merge and centered field. So we're going to scooch over a little bit there. And what I want to do is I'm going to use these two fields. Let's going to use L through M on that one. So L through M, I'm going to merge and center those. And I'm going to left justify that. So here I'm going to merge and center that here. And then we're going to right justify that. So here's our fields here. We're going to add some more fields here. So I want the list total. So we're going to put that in here, list total. And I also want a purchase total. So the list total is gonna be all the items on the list. So we'll go ahead and merge and center those across these two, holding down the control, merge and center and write justify. Now those fields in which users will enter, we're gonna merge and center this. Our notes needs to be a longer field. So we're gonna merge and center and left justify that. Those fields in which users are gonna enter, we are going to color those white. So these fields are all going to be white. So we're gonna give it that white. And then what I'll do is I'll give it a border here. So we'll just use black on this one and then we'll go border and then I'll do the black on the top, right and bottom and I'll do a dotted line on the left here. So that's gonna be sufficient. And then here for our labels, we're gonna do just the opposite. So formatting those cells here. Control one will also get you there on the top left and the bottom, clicking okay. Okay, that's good. I do wanna give these a color here. Actually, we're gonna also do the top and bottom control one. 
we're going to do the middle here but let's give them a little bit of a color although that color is actually almost the same as the background but it adds a little bit of consistency it's going to be this color right here okay so that's almost the same as the background you won't be able to tell the difference on that but i like the way that that looks we are going to write justify these because these are our labels here so they should be justified the date is going to be a long date so we're going to set that format everything else is going to be text these we're going to set those to either currency or accounting currency is fine in this case and these are going to be formulas all right so here's where our items are going to go added in and we're going to set some conditional formatting here and then what we can do is we can go to the view and we can turn the grid lines off so we don't need to see those saving our work so far let's go ahead and add in some pictures here i've got a logo that i've created with midjourney and so we're going to put that in here and it's going to be a bit big when i first add it in so we can reduce the size of that and that fun little logo is going to go right about here buttons are similar so what we want to do is i need to create categories subcategories and items i want to have our information here this is our list i want to know if it's been added so i'm going to let's just copy this here and i'm going to paste the formats right across here they're going to be very similar that's a little bit off the screen let me move to the right so you guys can see every step that i do pasting those formats right here so i want to know that it's added i want to know the item name i want to know the quantity here also the item cost and lastly the total cost now the total cost is going to be a formula we can add that in right now so the total cost is simple only when there is a value at quantity and item cost when both of these contain values then i want to put that total in so we're going to use an equals if and then it's going to be an and so there's going to be two conditions the first condition is going to be if that quantity does not equal empty the second condition is going to be the item cost does not equal empty so when those conditions are both true we're going to close it then what do i want to do i simply want to multiply the quantity times the item cost here however if either one of those are blank if it's false we're simply going to put blank okay great so i like that now all we need to do is just copy that and then paste that formula all the way down to a large number of rows so we'll do all the way around right around here okay i'm going to paste those formulas in here and perfect so now that they've been copied so now all we need to do is enter one and then 200 and that's going to be perfect okay so we also want to format those but let's go down to a large row down here right about here should be sufficient and that's our total column and then what i want to do is shift here and then what we want to do is just format those and we'll use the currency okay very good now everything's formatted accordingly and perfect oh, i like that now whether it's been added or not we're going to insert you use a symbol for that now the symbol we're going to enter either one so either it's going to be this symbol which is our wingdings 254 when it's been selected or we're going to use the wingdings 111 if it's not selected so regardless we need to make sure that the font is the wingdings font for that column so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just again scroll all the way down to a large column here something that encompasses all holding down the shift and making sure that the font there is wingdings that's what i want to use okay very good so saving our work so far and now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have everything we need and we're going to add some shapes in that now remember the categories i want to know all the categories if i have an item list here here's my items here notice we've got a lot of categories i want a unique list of categories and that category is going to be right here i want to create shapes based on those unique lists of categories so we need a sample shape so basically when i create that i need some kind of a sample shape so we're going to insert that and we're going to do shapes here and i'm just going to create a square shape something about like about this width should be fine and we'll set the height okay so that's sufficient for us now what i'm going to do is i'm going to set a shape fill here and i'm going to set a shape outline here we'll use a dark outline here or black outline that's sufficient so the reason is i want that to change once it's been selected this is going to be our sample shape so we want to make sure that that's formatted exactly as we want so we can just put let's just say our longest one is drinks and beverages okay so drinks and beverages so we want to make sure it fits which it does and uh i think that's uh, fruits and vegetables is also a little bit big so we want to make sure that when we create a button we make it the button the size of our biggest so we see fruits and vegetables this is probably our biggest one right about here it's about the same so we want to make sure the size of the button works properly with it okay so it does so everything looks good and i like the way that that looks it's formatted we'll left justify it there's no icon to go with that so we're going to give this a name i want the name that we're going to use in vba it's going to be a sample so from this sample we are then going to create additional categories and i'm going to call this sample category shape so sample category and then we'll do shp okay so i want to create another one for items so i'm going to duplicate that here 
and I want to create another one for sample item shape. So we're going to use a slightly different one. Let's color that. It's going to be a little bit lighter on that one. So that's what I want, slightly lighter. This is going to be for items. I'm going to use two columns of items, one here and one here because we've got a lot of items. So when we select a category, our subcategories will list. When I select a subcategory item, we want all the items part of that subcategory will display. For example, let's take a look at this. If I've got drinks and beverages, if I select that, I want to know all the types like energy drink, drinking water. So I want all those subcategories to be displayed. When I select soda, I want to know all the items that are sodas that are available for me, and then we can select those. So that's exactly how we're going to do it. And so for these two samples, we can place them off to the side. We don't need them visible for our purposes right now, but we've got an admin. Let's go and add some things. I'm going to need to know that selected list ID. Now remember, each individual shopping list has its own ID. So when I select a shopping list, I need to know what ID it is. Now I've got a named range for that. If we go into the formulas, names, and we look under list ID, we see that we have the list ID here. So I want to know that list ID one is on row four. So the first thing is I put that list ID one here. Next up, I want to know the database row. So that we'll put in selected list database row what row is it located on we're going to use equals if error we're going to use a match for that and i'm looking up this value right here and i'm looking it up into the named range that you just saw called list id i want an exact match zero now the first one starts on row four so we're going to add three if there's an error we're going to do empty it's going to tell me that list id one is on row four list id two is on row five so that's perfect i'm going to left justify those I also want to know the next available list ID, next list ID. Since they're all numerical, that next one is going to be the first available one. So we're going to use a formula for that equals if error, in case there's no date at all, max of the list ID. If you follow me, you see this very often, but I'm sure you know it by now. Okay, so we're going to add one. If there's no data, I want to just put one, setting that default to one. That means our next list ID is four. If we look in our shopping list, we see that our next available one is four. Perfect. So we're going to give those a unique color because those are for our list. So we're going to just give those orange color and put some borders around them. I also want to know some information. When I select an item here, I want to know what information about that item. Let's take a look inside the formulas, name manager, and we see that we have item name. If we tab over to that, we see we have all the item names using the offset. So it's called item name. I want the user to be able to select from that. So what I need to do is go into the data, data validation, and then set this to list. And it's going to be equals that same name range called item underscore name. Okay, so now that we have that, ensure that we have that. Now in the newer versions of Office 365, autocomplete works automatically, which is really nice. So you can see very, very quickly it works automatically, which I like. Okay, so when, sorry, that's some existing VBA, so never mind that. When I make a selection on this, I want to know some information about that item. So first of all, I'm going to put in the item ID, item ID. I want to know the item database row, and I want to know the entered item row. So this is slightly different, this enter. That means that there's going to be two ways that a user can enter an item. When they select on that item shape, it's going to automatically enter it. Okay, let me zoom out. It's a little bit big here. The second way is simply to enter the item on this cell, and that also is going to give the user the ability to automatically select on that. So when they enter an item through this, I want to know what that row is. So how do we know that? We can use equals if error. We need a match for that. And I want to know the row that's associated. So we're looking up this one right here in L. And I'm looking it up based on the name. That item name is the named range. I want an exact match. Okay, I want to know the row here. So again, we're going to add three to that. Our first one starts in row four. If there's an error, just show empty. It's going to tell me that beefsteak is on row 116. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now, I have another way where there's an item ID. When I select an item, the ID of that item is going to be put in here. For example, if I have the first one, which is item or UPC, it's actually called UPC SKU or ID. It's all the same. I've just copied that. And I'm going to put that directly inside this item ID. I should probably call that item UPC. It's a little bit confusing. UPC, SKU, same thing, all the same, okay? So it's that unique identifier for the item. I wanna know what database row based on this number here. 
So we can use a named range. I'm gonna use equals again, if error. Once again, a match. This time we're looking up this item UPC. And I'm going to look it up inside this called item skew. That's also a named range that I created. Exact match. Again, adding three to that. I want to know the row. If there's an error, show empty. That's going to tell me this first one is on row four. That's exactly what I want. So giving these some unique colors. So the idea here is basically when a user makes a selection on a button, that ID is going to be entered here. I'm going to check to make sure there's a row here. Also, when a user enters this item here, I want to check to make sure that there's a row here. And if so, we're going to do something. Okay, very good. We're moving really fast. That's all we need for the admin. Super simple. We've got some samples here and I want to create some conditional formatting here. So that means when we add some items here, I want some conditional formatting to show up some alternating rows. So let's take a look at that and see how that's going to happen. So the first thing is what I'm going to do is select a range here. We're going to change that range. I'm going to go into conditional formatting. I'm going to create a new rule and that rule is going to be based on two different conditions. So we're going to use a formula of that. In fact, we're going to create a third rule as well. So equals and I want to know if the item name is not empty, but it's going to be for every single row in the range. So I'm going to remove the dollar sign and just put in eight it does not equal empty. So that's one condition. The other condition is I want it for even rows, which is the mod of row two equals zero. So those are the two conditions. When both of those conditions are true, we want this to be activated. So we're gonna use a format on that. And I'm gonna use a fill and I'm gonna give it a white fill. And we can use a black border here, which is fine here. Using the black or automatic here. What I wanna do is I wanna create just a dotted line border on the left, the bottom and the right, clicking okay. Okay, so what that's gonna do is for even rows, clicking okay. And I'm gonna copy this because I'm gonna make a slight change for the odd ones, clicking okay. Now, when we manage rows, I want to also add something for odd rows. So we're gonna click a new row using a formula again, this time pasting that in, except we're changing the zero to a one because we need something for odd rows. Formatting that, I've got some saved colors. So again, we're gonna use the same borders, which is the dotted line on the left, the bottom, and the right. Now we're gonna use the fill. Now those are some saved fill colors, so they can be found in the fill effects, even though it's the same color. I'm gonna give it this green and that same exact green for both the top and the bottom. So it's really not two colors, it's the same color, but it's just that our recent colors are saved inside this. So I can use those, clicking okay and clicking okay. Okay, and then once again, okay, and then click apply. Okay, so we see we've got some nice conditional formatting. The only thing that I wanna do is update the ranges accordingly. And we're just gonna make those for a large road. So 999 and then also 999 here. Okay, so now we've got that. There'll be one additional conditional formatting that we're gonna add soon onto that. And I'll show you what that is. Okay, so we've got the item name, we've got the market here, the date. Let's put in a date, make sure that it is formatted correctly. I do want them left justified as I do these as well and this one as well. Okay, so everything's looking good. We've got our ultimate shopping list. We've got our logo. We do need to add some buttons in there along with some icons, so let's do that now. We can just add these. Of course, I wanna change the name. I'm gonna use Control D, duplicate that. And I'm gonna go up here and we're just going to call this Add New Button, okay? So this is gonna be for our Add New. So we're just gonna call this New List, in all in capitals, New List. And I wanna make sure that this is right justified here going to be a small button. We don't have a lot of space, but we do need space for an icon. So we want to create our buttons first, then we're going to add in our icons. Okay, so next up, I've got this new list. I'm going to use control D duplicating that once again, and we need to be able to save our list, saving or updating a list. So all we need to do is just type in the word save, and that's going to be sufficient for us. Next up, I also want to be able to delete the list. So again, duplicating that once again, using control D We'll just change this to delete list. And of course we need to print it and take it to the store with us so we don't forget anything. So we are going to print the list. And lastly, I want some navigation abilities to go from our previous list to our next list. So we are going to insert a shape here and I'm gonna use this arrow here. And we're just going to remove the top and bottom and then bring it down. We do want to format that. So if we take a look in here, the shape height is 0 0.27. I want to make this exactly the same 0 0.27, 0 0.27. Okay. Once we get that formatted just right, using the same shape fill that we have used, that same dark color that we've used. And I believe there's an outline on the same color outline on here. Okay, so this is going to be for our previous. So we're going to type in previous. 
and we also want to make sure I'll do this in all in capitals actually in the sample I didn't previous and we want to format it notice it doesn't fit so we're going to use control one and I'm going to go into the text options here and I want to go into this text box here and change those margins zero 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 and then oops, spelled that wrong then what I want to be able to do is I want to center that all the way okay so now everything fits quite nicely just add a period for the abbreviation point once we have it just the way we want to all we need to do is just duplicate it for the next and I want to make sure it's centered this is actually for our next I'm going to duplicate that and then we're going to switch this around so what I'm going to do is go into the shape then we're going to rotate this and we're going to flip it horizontal so that's perfect for our previous we just need one for the next so we're just going to change the text on this one control a to select all the text next okay so now we have our both previous and next and now what we're going to just going to line those up a little bit and I like the way that, that looks perfect okay so we'll adjust the sizes and the spacing in just a bit now we're ready for those icons we always want to make sure that we are first adding all the buttons and then the icons because everything that gets added later gets on top so when we insert our pictures place them over the cells in this device the newer versions have that we're going to go into icons and I've got some saved icons I'm just going to select all of those and we're going to click insert I'm then going to change the size to all of them to 0.2 now that I have them all we're just simply going to drag them up here where we need them new list and then we'll delete it we'll add some spacing on this one this is for the print list and this last one is for the save okay so i think that covers it up so this one is already right the sizing is right i'm going to put those in the middle and group them together for this one the save i can reduce it we have limited size so i'm just going to make sure that it's a little bit squeezed in we can also change the margins but i think we're okay and then grouping these we want to group them individually we'll make this one a little bit bigger here so we have room for the icon and then of course we want to make sure that we're always going to be consistent with our sizing and print list looks good except we need to add a little bit more to the button here and then let's move this down here just so I can see what I'm doing grouping that and then previous and next will bring those out okay very good so now what we want to do is we want to line them up we can use our selection tool to do just that I want to line them up horizontally and I also want to space them accordingly so perfect okay so I like the way that that looks and we can bring them up here and I'm going to group them together I'm going to use control one again it's already showing up here I want to make sure that inside the properties we are moving but not sizing with cells so if I decide to increase these columns give it a little bit more spacing to allow the buttons I can do just that and those buttons won't change okay saving our work so far everything's looking good we've got our conditional formatting now as I had mentioned before we do have an additional conditional formatting so we might as well add that in right now so when I insert that checkbox for example insert symbol I want to insert this box for an empty or right? that's going to show that they has not yet been added or through VBA we're going to insert one that has been checked so as soon as that it's been put in the cart or we received it or whatever we want a single just a single one is fine okay so very good and I do want them centered here so I'm just going to scroll down here all the way and center those holding the shift down and then we'll just do centered okay so the idea is when something has been selected with this character now what character is that let's take another look when we insert the symbol we see that that check box here is wingding character 254 so when that character equals 254 I want to make sure that we are going to cross anything out so if I've got a quantity here and another price here I want to make sure that it gets crossed out or strike through so how do we do that well we're going to go into the conditional formatting here and I'm probably not going to use it on this one I'm just going to start here through here so we're going to go into the home conditional formatting manage rules and in this case what I want to do is create a brand new rule and I'm going to use a formula now newer versions of Excel has a checkbox feature which is really cool except I want to make sure to build these for any version of Excel so that's why we're doing this I want to make sure that this is good regardless of what you're doing so we're going to use it's going to be column I so we're focused on column I in any row that's associated so we're going to remove that dollar sign equals what character 252 252 I believe that's what it was and then what we want to do is we want to format that and then we want to go in the font and I want to strike through on that and I'm going to change the font color here use a gray font so it's a little bit lighter clicking okay clicking okay and then apply Nope, oh, 254 I forgot that number okay so 254 we'll just clear that that's correct and clicking okay so now when we click apply we see that whatever we've entered here is automatically strike through and that's exactly what I want but not this column 
but we do want to update that i want to make sure that the range here goes all the way to the same row so we're just going to clear out the 17 and change it to 999 and it's going to apply to all those rows below okay so if it equals this character we know great so as soon as i copy and paste this character down here that's automatically going to get strike through perfect that's what i want okay of course vba is going to take care of that when we check it or uncheck it just a single selection is going to automatically make that change for us so that's going to be nice okay so what we're ready to do we've got just about everything we need on this screen we can zoom out a little bit here saving our work now what i would like to do is i want to have a unique list of categories so i'm going to take this this sample category through vba and i'm going to create a unique list and i want to start it right there so how do we do that well that's going to happen through vba so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the developer and we're going to go to visual basic and i've got some code that's going to help us now i've got two of them open right the sample and the shopping list so i'm going to minimize that sample this is the one we're working in now we've got two modules in here screen macros which is going to help us with those shapes and our shopping list macros so we're going to go into the screen macros and we have something called refresh categories i've typed this code out for you to make it a little bit faster but i'm going to go with you every single step we've got some variables item shapes and category shapes i'm going to go over these variables as we need them in the code so that's going to help you category shape is a shape variable here so what we want to do is of course when we refresh the categories any categories that are already here i want them deleted now inside our updated version on patreon and youtube silver we will have the ability to add new items so i think that's kind of important okay so what we're going to do is i've got this sample category shape the first thing we want to do is clear out any existing categories we're going to give those a very specific name they're going to have a name that contains item category and then a unique identifier so for the first thing we want to do is i want to loop through all of the shapes inside the sheet and i want to make sure that they don't know other shapes other than these categories contain that string called item category okay so once we do that we're simply going to loop through that so let's go back in here so if we're going to check i want to look in the name of that shape so we're going to loop for each category shape for every single shape in our shop list shapes shop list is the name of that sheet that we're working on it's called shopping list here but our code name is called shop list see it right here shop list okay so what we're going to do is i want to loop through every shape inside that and i don't think we need this unless there's more than one so we can remove that if the in string using in string we're looking for some string inside the name of this shape if inside that name it contains item cat then i know we should delete it so basically this simple loop three line loop will delete all of the item categories i want to set an initial top and left position right right about up here i want that first category to appear so i need to set that top position based on let's say cell d4 and i also want to set that initial left position also based on d4 so we can do that and i've got variables here called left position as double top position as double we probably won't need these too much so the left position is based on the shop list d4 the left position of d4 top position is also based on d4 but i'm going to add three in others i don't want it right up so high i want to put it a little bit below and that's why we're going to add three okay now we're going to turn our attention to the items database this is our items database the idea is this i want to look at all these categories and from the entire list of categories all the way down to row 627 i want to determine a unique list just a unique list using an advanced filter and we're going to put that unique list right here so all we need is this column here and this column here this is going to get us our unique list once i have those i'm going to loop through these unique categories and i'm going to create a shape based on each one of those so here's how we're going to do it once we go in and determine the last row of our items database we need to run an advanced filter so i need to know the last row and it's going to be based on column a if it's less than four that means we have no data we can exit out i want to remove any criteria now this is very very important because if you're on a sheet that already has a criteria such as here this criteria here or this criteria here it is going to take on the old criteria i don't want any criteria there's no filter all i want is unique values without any filter so it's important to delete that criteria or filter before we attempt to run a new advanced filter that contains no criteria 
a criteria would go right here between the commas. There's no criteria. If we look at the IntelliSense here, this little help pop-up, we add a comma, we see that we have something called criteria range, but it's empty, right? There is no criteria range. The reason is we're only going to focus on column C. C is our category, so C3 through C in the last row. This is our range of categories. We're running an advanced filter. I want to take that and I want to copy it to new range. And I want to copy it to range J2. And I want to make sure that all the values are unique. So doing that's going to determine and get us this. Right? So if I delete this here and I want to run the code right up until that we have that, I'm simply going to run that code. And what that's going to do is create that brand new list of categories. As you see, it automatically got duplicated. Okay, great. So next up, what we want to do is we want to determine the last results row. If we look in here, we want to know based on column J, what is the last row of a result? That's going to be row eight. So we need something to do just that. Let's drop this down so we can see both. And we'll bring this up here, giving us a little bit more space. And so once we determine the last row inside a variable using F8, we can tab through that. We can see that the last row is eight. If for some reason the last results row is less than three, that means we have no data or no categories and we can exit the sub. Now we're ready to loop through our code for the result row equals three to the last result row. What I want to do is I want to put that category name. This is a string variable called category name. I want to put the name, which is located in column J, inside this variable. So we see our first one is called drinks and beverages. Now what I want to do is I want to duplicate that shape, sample category shape. If we take a look back on our shopping list, we see that this is called sample category shape. We're going to take that and we're going to duplicate it. So when we tab over, let's bring this a little bit over here so we can see. So when I use F8 through that and step through that, it duplicated it automatically. Not only did it duplicate it, but it gave it a unique name, item category and the result row, which is three. So if we take a look at this duplicated, we see it's called item cat three. So it duplicated that. Now what it's gonna do is gonna position that. So we're gonna focus on that brand new shape that we just created called shop list shape item category. So this is the one we're focusing on. So we're gonna give it that left position, which is right here based on that column D. I want to give it a top position. So if we F8 through that, it's going to move it up to the top. Now what I want to do is I want to give it some text. I don't want it to have fruits and vegetables. I want it whatever that category name is called drinks and beverages. So the text frame, text range, text is going to take on that category name. So we see that automatically it got changed. Now what we want to do is we want to increment the top position. We want to get that top position. This variable needs to get ready for the next one. So as we move through that, that top position simply is equal to the height of the shape plus two. It's going to give a little spacer. And we also want to assign a macro to that called category select. We'll be going over this macro next. Now there's a macro assigned to that and end with. So we're simply just going to loop through these and duplicate them each and every one as we move through this. So we can then run the entire macro and we see that we now have a brand new unique list of shapes based on those unique categories. Okay, very good. So what do we want to happen next? When I click on one of those categories, I want those subcategories to show up based on that. So essentially what we want to do is we want to create an advanced filter. I want to know only those subcategories for a given category, for example, insider items. If I've selected drinks and beverages, I want sodas, energy drinks, whatever. So I want to create an advanced filter and list those unique subcategories. So I'm going to create that advanced filter and the criteria I'm going to put right here inside L3. So we're going to have categories and subcategory advanced filter. And then I'm going to put the criteria of meats and seafood or whatever it is. And then I want only those subcategories to appear here. Then I'm going to run almost the same type of loop looping through all these subcategories, creating shapes just for those subcategories. So how do we do that? Well, that's gonna be in the next macro. So if we take a look, that's gonna be load subcategories. This is the one I want to show you here. So when does that happen? That happens on category select. This is the macro that we assigned to our shapes. If we take a look inside our shopping here, these brand new items that we just created, these shapes, we click assign macro, we see it's called category select. We might as well go over that one first. When I select this, we want something to happen. If we remember correctly, we created inside the text here is the name of that category. So I'm going to extract that name, whatever it is, and I'm going to put it into a variable called category name. So what we're going to do is we're going to take on our shopping list shapes, the application color, meaning the shape that called it, 
what I want to do is I want to take whatever text is inside that shape and I want to put that text inside a string variable called category name. I then want to take this category name and I want to place it inside our items database here inside L3 and that's going to be used for our criteria. So that's exactly what we're going to do. L3 is going to take on that category name. Set category name for criteria. Okay, very good. And if we remember back in our sample, let's bring the sample over. We also want to color. I want to color unique, right? That selected category must give it a unique color. I want that light green with black font, while the others must be dark green with white font. So we also need some code to help us with that. So how are we going to do that? Well, that's going to be next up. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to color all of the existing categories that dark green color. I want to ensure that all of them are that dark green color. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to recognize what colors there are. So I'm going to look in the shape format and I'm going to look at this shape fill. This is the color. If I go into more fill colors, I want to translate that color into an RGB value. So I see it right here, 6, 144, 42. That is the RGB values that I want to color all of them to. Then the selected one's going to get that light green. So to do that, we're going to focus on all of the shapes, but only those that contain item category. If the shape contains this text string item category, then I want to give it a color. So that color, again, we're going to take the fill color, RGB, it's going to equal to 6, 144, 42. That's that dark green color. I also want to make sure the font color is white. There's a few ways we can do it. Here's one way. Item shape, text frame, characters, font color equals VB white. So this is one way. I'll show you another way in just a moment. But I also want to make sure the one that we selected, I want that to go to light green with a black font. So how are we going to do that? We're going to focus on application color. Again, that's the name of the shape that called the macro. So we're going to focus on that. I want to give it a fill for color of 192, 255, 192. And that's basically just that light green color, right? If I were to select here, it's just a light green color. I can change this one if we want to, just, just to see what that color is here. I think it's this one here. So I want to give it this light green color. And then we would just go in and grab those RGB values, whatever the fill color is. So whatever fill color you like, just go into more fill colors and grab the RGB. I don't think that was it. Okay, so continuing on. So then we have that 192, 225, 199. So that's that light green color. That's the background color, which is the fill four color RGB, fill four color is our background color of the shape but we also want to color the text now remember we use this up here text frame for white but let's do something a little bit different again we can use the name of the shape application color this time we're using text frame 2 text range font fill for color rgb so this one's a little bit longer and this one's going to be an rgb value zero 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 is a black color that's the color that i want for the font so that means when i select a category it's going to change that color Okay, great. So once we run it, again, remember to review, we're going to take the category name, we're going to put it directly in L3, get it ready for our advanced filter. We're going to color all the shapes dark green running a loop with the white font. The selected category is going to take on that light green with the black font. Then we're going to run a macro to load the subcategories. That's the macro right here that I want to go with you now. So we're doing all this, then we're loading the subcategories. So the first thing what we want to do when we load all the subcategories, I want to remove any subcategories that might be there. Each one of those subcategories are always going to have a unique string called subcategory. If the shape contains that string, we want to remove it. So we're going to loop through that just like we did earlier. I'm going to set that initial left position based on column E. And I want to set that top position based on row four, adding three, just as we did before, setting that initial value. Now I'm going to focus on the items database, just as we did before, running a brand new filter here, that advanced filter. This time we're focused on both categories and subcategories, so columns C and D. We do need a criteria. It's going to be L2 through L3, and the results are going to be in N2. So that's exactly that advanced filter. Once we know we have data based on the last row, C and D columns starting at row three all the way to the last row running that advanced filter that criteria L2 through L3 and the results are going to come directly into N2 unique being true very important determining the last results row based on column N and if it's less than three we can exit the sub again we're going to do a loop just like we did before four three to the last results row 
We want to extract that subcategory name from N. And then what I want to do is once again, we're going to duplicate our sample category shape, giving it a unique name. This time we're calling it subcategory and the result row. Remember before it was called something different. We called it item category. Now it's called subcategory. So we're differentiating between the categories and the subcategories. Very important. Again, we're going to focus on just that shape that we just created and give it a new name, left position, the top position, giving it the text. It's going to have that subcategory name setting the top position and then increasing that top position so the next subcategories are positioned lower and then assigning a macro called subcategory select we're also giving that a macro so when we run this macro let's go ahead and take a look at that we're going to run it we know already that that macro has been assigned so if we select here it's going to run that now these shapes are a little bit too big so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drop this category and i'm going to adjust it so control one here and i'm going to the text options here Go into there and all we have to do is we just need to change the sample that's all we need to do left margin 0 0.02 right margin zero here top zero zero okay so that's enough there and then we'll just make sure that we just center that one here maybe we'll do a little bit more on that 0 0.04 okay so i like that so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have enough room now all we need to do is just rerun our macro called refresh categories and that's going to update those a little bit smaller which i like now when i select on them Everything's gonna be nice and small and everything's fitting in just perfectly. Okay, so now we see that when we select on these categories, our subcategories are appearing just like that, perfect. The next macro is when we make a selection on a subcategory, we want the items to display. Now we see if we select on the assigned macro, we see that it's called category select. So when we edit that, we're gonna go into category select. Remember the one just above, we just won. So we're on to the next one called subcategory select. When we select on a subcategory, what is it that we want to do? Well, I want to load all the items that are associated with that subcategory. So basically inside our items database, we're going to run another advanced filter. This time I'm going to put the subcategory that we just selected inside P3. Then what I want to do is I want to list out all the items and I want to list out these SKU and UPC here. Then I want to create shapes based on all these. The shape name is going to take on something like item and then the UPC SKU number along and then the text inside is going to take on the chicken bites or whatever the item name is. Inside our shopping list, this is the shape that we're going to be automatically updating here. I believe it's this one here and then we can again we're going to 0 0.03 0, 0, 0. okay so i also want to make sure that we formatted this one accordingly okay so i like the way that that looks and i'm going to save it but it is this item that we are going to be duplicating called sample actually this should be called sample item shape this is our category here this should be our sample item so we need to update that because it is our item slightly different so this could be called sample item shape that's the one I want to duplicate. Saving our work so far, we're going to go back in to subcategory select. When we select that subcategory, we want to take that category name. We're going to extract that. It's going to come again from the text inside the shape that we've selected. We're going to put that in P3. That is our advanced filter. Remember, P3 is our criteria here. And then we want the results to come here. So we're going to run just another advanced filter. I actually want to update the colors, our subcategories also get colors remember when i select it i want that selected one to go to light green and i want to make sure the rest go to dark green so we're going to do exactly the same but this time with our subcategories where we loop through all the subcategories if it's a subcategory i want to color those background dark green and the font white for our selected subcategory giving it that light green color and the black font so that's what we're going to do with the sub now we're going to load the items so we've set our criteria here and now we're going to load the items and that's the next one right here so we want to clear all the existing items on the screen i want to make sure that they're all clear how do we do that they're going to give a very unique name called shop item that's the unique name that we're going to assign to the items probably don't need this when i remove more than one shape with this then i use the on air but this is probably not necessary but it's okay to keep it there so we're going to remove all the existing items probably don't need this one here not necessary then what i want to do is again run another advanced filter based on the items database just as we did before except this one must be slightly different as it encompasses different data we need to include the sku we need to include the item name and we need to include the subcategory so it's going to be all the way from a all the way through d is our original data and our criteria is p2 through p3 and our results are going to come r2 through s2 so that is the advanced filter a3 through d 
criteria is P2 through P3. The results are R2 through S2 and unique to be true. Determine the last results row based on column R. If it's less than three, we're going to exit the sub. This is probably not necessary. It's pretty fast already. This time we're setting an initial top position and left position. And we're basing it on column F. Now, the only different thing is I want to alternate odd, even, odd, even. So that means I want two columns of items because there's a lot of items. So that's why I've used columns F and G. So they're going to take on both of those. And I'll show you how we do that. Setting the item width is going to be based on column F minus five. So it's going to set a fixed width for our shape and item height is going to take on the height of the sample shape so we're going to take that sample item shape and i want to make sure that we set an item height for that so once we have that item height and item width we are going to then run a loop through all of our results so all the results that we got i'm going to run a loop from three to the last results row so here's how we're going to do it we're going to take that item id and put that into a string variable from column r i also want to take the item name another string variable from column s now is where we duplicate that sample item shape one we just updated we're going to duplicate that giving it a very unique name called shop item and the item id so the shop item along with the item id gives us a unique name for that shape once we have it then what i want to do is i want to set that top position now what i want to do is i want to know what column to put it in are we going to put it in column f or are we going to put it in column g so how do we know that well, I'm just going to use odd or even. So if it's an even row, it's going to go in the second column, which is column G. However, if it's an odd row, such as the first one, it's going to go in column F. So F, G, F, G, F, G. So that's how we're going to do that. So it's going to go in column F, G, F, G, like that. So it's very easy to use. So we're going to use mod of row two. The result row mod of row two is an even row. Then the left position is going to take on column G. Otherwise, it's going to remain at column F. The top position is going to be the item height plus resetting the top position. So we're resetting the top position on or even. So the original one is going to take on the left position. So basically, we're going to set the item width. The item height is probably not necessary. The existing height is fine. We don't need to change that. Probably don't need the item height here as well. We can comment that out. So we can either set the item height or just keep it so it's fine either way. So then what we want to do is we're going to set the width to the item width. We are going to then put some text inside that brand new shape that we created. That text is going to be that item name. And of course, we are going to assign a macro to that shape called item select. Now, if you assign a macro to the sample here, that will work just as well. But we're using this sample for both our categories and subcategories. So it's important that we assign the macro during the VBA process because we're using the same shape. So in this case, called item select, that's going to be the next macro we go over. Then we're just simply going to complete our loop and turn on application screen updating. Okay, great. So how's that going to work? When I make a selection on an item, it's going to then add that in. Okay, we need to update that top position. And actually that height was kind of important because it's the height that we use. So let's focus on that. Let's re-add that height in there because that height, if I remember correctly, we do need that because it's the item height's going to set the top position right here. So the top position is equal to the item height, kind of important, forgot. Okay, so now what we do, we have the perfect item and we see that we have that advanced filter running. So when I select pork here, or when I select fish here, we go into the items here, we see fish and all those items that are fish here. And then those items get created based on that item. So very, very good. Okay, great. So when we select an item, remember we now have a macro that's been assigned called item select. And that's the next macro that we're going to go over. Okay, and when I select an item, there's a few things that I want to do. The first thing what I want to do is I want to extract that item ID. We have a string variable called item ID. Now, if we remember correctly, inside each item, we have the name shop item, and then the rest is the ID or UPC or SKU. So we've got that here. So what I want to do is I want to take shop item out of the name. If I take it out and replace it with nothing, it's going to leave us with that ID. And that's exactly what I want. So we are going to use the replace statement, the shape that called it, we're going to take the shop item and we're going to replace it with nothing. Again, the original text, what we want to look for and what we want to replace it with. And that's going to leave us with that item ID. I'm going to take that item ID. And I'm going to put it in B8. I'm going to put it right here. Actually, it should go into B6, I believe. Let's update these. These belong down here, eight right here just so I don't need to update the code. Okay, there we go, that's better. Okay, so it's gonna be inside B8, nine and 10 is where I really want those. So B8 is going to take on that 
item ID. So right here, B8 is going to take on. If B9, now B9, we're going to check to make sure there's a row. Remember, B9 is our formula here that we put in based on what's in B8. I want to make sure that there's a row that's associated with this. If we were to put in the wrong number here, we see that this would be blank. If it's blank, we need to let the user know. So when we make a selection, we need to make sure that it is correct. So to do that, B9 equals MP, please select a correct item. That item database row is in B9. I want to know that database row. That's very important because I need to know the item cost. I need to put that item cost in here. So I need that database row because I need to look up that row and to look up what's in column E, which is the price. And I need to place that directly inside column L. Okay, great. So that's important. It also helps us let us know exactly if it's a correct number or not. Okay, so now item name is going to equal, I want to take the item name, I'm going to extract that from the text inside that shape. That's our item name. I want to take that and I want to put that item name directly inside here, inside L6, just as if we entered it. So when I select on it, notice how it takes that name and it puts it directly inside there. Let's make an update here and here, and I'll just uh, gonna format those cells and I want that dotted line on the right here. I'm picky like that, the border should take that dotted line. And also, these are gonna be formulas. We're gonna add those formulas in just a minute. So let's go ahead and color those backgrounds since they're not gonna be entered. So very good. Okay, so continuing on. So that item name is gonna go into L6. As you just saw, L6 is gonna take on that item name. Okay, now what we want to do is, just as you saw, I wanna give this are selected, I wanna give it a white color with green font. And I want the rest to go back to that dark green with white font. So again, just like we're gonna do, we're gonna loop through all the item shapes. We're gonna give it a green color, that green color for the fill. And I want the white color font for those, all the shapes. Then we're gonna color only the selected one. How do we know it's selected? We could use application color here just as well or the shop item and shop ID. So application color would work just as well. I'm just showing you a different one. Because we've already extracted the item ID, we could simply add it back. Both will work just fine. We're gonna give it a white color background and we're going to give it a dark green color font here. And we're gonna turn on application screen updating. We didn't turn it off, but it's good practice to keep it on. Okay, so, and that's simply gonna do just that. So now we see that we've added it to here. So everything we select automatically gets their name added here. And you see also the ID is here and the rows associated here. This is important, that row name, because if the user enters their own item from our list here, we also need to make sure that there's an accurate row here in B10, so that's very important. Okay, very good. Next up, now what happens when I add something to this list? Now, either when I select it or when VBA places it, I want to do something. What do I want to do? Well, I want to check for two. I want to add it to this list. But what if it's already on this list? If it's already on this list, then of course, I want to just increase the quantity. In fact, let's go ahead and center this here. There we go. Okay, so if it's already existing, I want to increase the quantity. If it doesn't exist, then I want to add it to the first available row down below. Okay, so how are we going to make all that happen? Well, we see already that when we select an item, there's a change to L6. Also, when we select an item here, there's a change to L6. So regardless of whether we're selecting here or whether we're choosing from a drop-down list, there's a change. So basically what we can do is we can create a macro based on the change event of L6. And that's exactly what we've done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the VBA. We're gonna focus on that shopping list sheet. I'm gonna uncomment that out. And we're gonna focus on worksheet change. Again, if you wanna find it, worksheet, and then we can look inside the change event. Now it's gonna be a change on item change. We're gonna focus on L6. If not intersect, target, and basically all that that means is if there was a change to L6, not and nothing cancel each other out, making it a true, a double negative. So that means if there's a change to L6 and we wanna make sure that L6 is not empty. If both of those conditions are true, we are gonna run a macro called list add item. If we want to find the macro on that, all we need to do is right click and go to definition. And that's going to bring us to our first macro inside our shopping list macros right here. So let's uh, minimize this one. That's our sample here. This is the one we're focused on. So list add item. So when we make a change, we want something to happen. Now what's essential is that we have a value in B10. B10 is what? B10 is the row that's associated for whatever item is inside L6. If for some reason 
a B10 is empty, we know it is an incorrect or empty value. So if B10, that's the first thing we want to check. If B10 equals empty, then please make sure to enter an existing item. We can exit the sub. Okay, so now what we want to do is I want to make sure that both the item database row based on the item ID here is the same. So if B9 and B10 are different, what I want to do then is I want to take the value of the column A, that UPC, and I want to place it directly inside B8. For example, if I make a selection on here and I look at sliced strawberries, you see that it got added already because we uncommented out. Let me just comment that out again because I want to show it to you without action here. So I'm going to comment that out. Once I do that, nothing will happen. So except it is going to return. So here, if I select something and I see that this is row five, the database row is five, and I see that our item ID has a database row of 229, they're not the same. So what I want to do is I want to look up the UPC in row number five. So I'm going to look at five. I'm going to take this UPC and I want to put it directly inside here, B8. And that's going to ensure the correct UPC for our item is showing. Back into our macro list item math. If B10 does not equal B9, they're different. Then what I want to do is I want to take that item database row, the one that's located in B10, I'm going to put it into a variable. Then what I'm going to do is inside that items database, column A, which is our UPC SKU, and the item database, this is our value here. I want to place this in B8. So that's all we need to do. We're adding the ID, access UPC SKU. Okay, so I want to add those items in if possible. Now that we've synced up everything, we know we've got the right UPC, we know we've got the database row. We're going to set the item ID to what's in B8. I'm going to put that into a variable. And I want to put the item database row in B9. So I'm going to put that into a variable. I want to set the item row to zero. We're going to look up that item row. I want to make sure that it's zero. Now, what is the item row? I want to look for it here. Let's clear out some sample data that we have here. And so we can move forward on this. I'm going to clear everything out here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside column H. That is where our ID is going to be located. I'm going to place that ID. It's going to be hidden in column H. What I want to do is I want to look in column H and I want to see if that UPC exists already in column H, then all we need to do is increase the quantity. If it does not exist, I'm going to see the first available row and I'm going to place all the item information, the checkbox, the UPC, the name, the quantity, and the cost, and the formula will be automated. So that's exactly what we're going to do. But first we have to check if it's there. If it is not there, it could create an error and therefore we've wrapped it on air resume next and on error goes zero. So we're going to look for that item row. I'm going to look in column H8 through H99. I'm going to look for that item ID and I'm going to look inside formulas. The reason we're using formulas is because we're going to hide that. And once it is hidden, it won't be found if I use Excel values. So I must use Excel formulas. We're going to look for that and we're going to look for the row. So this is going to be our item row if it is found. If it is found, if it's not equal to zero, then all we need to do is increase the quantity. The quantity is in column K. So whatever is in column K plus one is going to be our new value in K. And then we can simply go to item found. It's going to skip all this and go right here. However, if it has not been found, we do need to add it to a brand new row. So we're going to look inside column J and the first available row. We're going to get the last row of the value. Right now it's seven and we're going to add one, which would be eight. So through the code, we're going to do that J99 and XL up plus one is the first available row. I'm going to put that into this long variable called item row. Then all we need to do is add in our information associated with that item. Column H is going to take on that item ID, UPC. Column I is going to take on that checkbox, that empty checkbox. It is character 111. If we look inside that, again, insert just to refresh our memory symbol, and we look at that empty checkbox, we see it's wingdings 111 using the CHR. Now keep in mind that within VBA, it is CHR into that character. However, inside a formula, it is CHAR. Okay, so keep that in mind if you wonder. They're slightly different, but they both mean the same thing. Okay, so that's the differentiation between VBA and using a formula. Okay, great. So that's going to enter that empty checkbox in column I. Next up in column J, I want to put in that item name. That item name is located 
allocated whatever's in L6. Column K is going to take on that default quantity, which is 1 initially. And column L is going to take on that price. Now, that price is found inside the item database row. We've already defined that item database row up here. So what I want to do is I want to extract the price. Now, the price is located in column E and the item database row. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to place it directly inside column L with this line of code. So we're going to use range L in the item row equals items database E and the item database row. And that is going to be that item price. Okay, then up, all we're going to do is simply clear out the item field. The item name field, we're just simply going to clear out. Since it is a merge cell, we're going to use L6 through M6. Okay, and let's see how that works. So we got two ways to enter it. So we simply can make a change on here. Let's go ahead and uncomment that change event. We want to show that that's working inside our shopping list. And we're going to uncomment that line of code that's going to make a change on L6. So we double click and enter. It's going to enter that one item here. So we have Sprite. If I were to enter it one more time, Sprite one liter, we see that it's going to change the quantity. Okay, great. If I enter smoked salmon and I click it one more time or two more times, it's going to increase that quantity or whatever we do. Okay, great. So things are looking really good. Now we're able to add items. If I make a selection change on here, what I want to do is I want to check or uncheck based on a selection change. And that's going to be a selection change from I9 all the way down. So it's going to be a selection change event. Now inside our worksheet code here, we're going to look at this selection change event. Selection change comes directly from here. And that means when a user makes a selection, we want something to happen. If the user makes a selection on more than one cell at one time, such as this, we don't want anything to happen, so we can exit the sub. If the target count large is greater than one, then we're going to exit the sub. Now, if a user makes a change, I8, so I8 is our first cell here, all the way through I in a large row, if the user makes a selection, and we want to make sure that J is not empty, right? If they make a selection here, nothing's going to happen because we see that J does not contain a value. So there's nothing to do. Only for those when we have a value inside J, do we want something to happen to I? And what do we want to happen? Well, if the current target value equals character 111, which is that unchecked box, then we want to enter the character, which is that checkbox, which is character 254. Otherwise, using else, we are simply going to give it that checked value. And then we're going to select another cell. The reason we select another cell is so that the user can make a selection on the same cell again if necessary. So if I click on here, it is going to be automatically set. If I click on it again, and again and again. So you can see how quickly we can show those selected items simply by selecting them. And then conditional formatting takes over, crossing out the item and also changing the font to that gray. Okay, very good. So we've got that. We now have completed our list. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to save the list, add a new list, delete, print, and previous next. So the first thing we are going to do is assign those macros and then we're going to use those buttons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use control. I'm going to select on the buttons and I'm going to click add a macro. Now it's going to be list new. That is the macro that we've already created, which I'll be going over with you right now. We have another macro for save list. So again, holding down the control, right clicking, using N. This one's going to be for list, save, or update. So we're going to select on that. Deleting a list, we can delete a list if we want to. Again, doing the same thing, list, delete. And also we want to be able to print our list. So that's going to be a relatively just a few lines of code on that. List print is here. Next, I want to navigate to a previously list. So we're going to right click on that and that's going to be list previous. And lastly, we want list next. So we're going to right click on that and list next. Okay, so let's get into these macros. The first of it is called new list. When I select on that, I want to clear a bunch of cells and I want to make sure that the total cost is not cleared. Notice the formula is still there. So we're going to be clearing out all the way from H8 all the way through L and also column N, and it's going to be our database, and I'll be going over that in a moment, so we want to clear that out. So that is called the new list. So let's take a look inside our shop list macros. Now, the first one we went over was list item add. We already went over that. Next up is the list new. So again, very, very simple. We're simply going to take a bunch of cells, and we're going to clear it out. Now, keep in mind, I also want to clear out any list ID. Clearing out here, and I'm going to take the next list ID, and I'm going to put it directly inside B2. So to do that, after we clear out all the cells, whatever's located in B4, which is our next list ID, I'm going to place that in B2, 
and we're going to select J3. J3 is our market, and that's going to give the user the ability to automatically enter. So when we click new, it's going to do just that. Okay, very, very good. Next up is the save or update. So let's add some information to our market. I'm going to raise these buttons up a little bit. It's easy to click, so we're going to raise that list up just a little bit. We don't want it right on top, so we don't want to accidentally click on it. Okay, so let's put in Fredder's Food Fresh farm okay so now we have that now we're going to put in a date 115 here i want to put in some notes and we also need to put in our total so test notes and so let's select a few things lobster tails are very nice now what i would like to have is some totals i want to know the total list and that's very easy it's going to be the equals the sum of basically everything in this column relatively simple we'll just use a large row and that's going to be everything on the list However, what I would like to know is if it's been purchased or selected as it is here, I want to make sure to total those up, essentially just those selected I want to purchase. So we're going to assume that when they're checked, they have been purchased and I want to total those up uniquely. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use sum if, and we know that if we go back into insert again here, we remember that it is character, that checkmark is character 254. So that's when we want to use the sum if. So how do we do that? We can use equals sum if, and then we're going to do the range. Here's our range based on a large row. So I ate all the way through 999. And then what is the criteria? It's going to be character again, 254. 254 is our character. And our sum range is located here in the total cost. And again, using the same 999. So we simply want to total only those that have been selected. And we see that it is 604. As we make a selection, it automatically totals based on that so we can quickly see that the purchase total changes as we make selections or unselections here very very easily okay very good so now that we have that i also want to update an additional item so as we add items we want to be able to save this data to the database we want to save this information this information is going to be saved to the shopping list with the list id the market date notes total and the purchase total we also want to save the individual list items here along with the list the date the item whether it's been added or not we want to save that we also want the item name here the quantity the price the total the list row and the database row now the list row is associated with this it is that row that's here 8 9 10 11 so that's the list row the database row of course is the actual row that's on it we can use a formula for that four or five whatever the row of the database is okay very good so the first thing what we want to do is when we save it is we need to make sure that our required fields which in this case are market which is in j3 and the date which is in j4 have been added if not we want to let the user know so we're going to look inside that if j3 based on our shopping list equals empty or j4 equals empty we're going to let the user know to please make sure to add a market and date before saving this list and we're going to exit the sub out we're going to determine the last row i need to know the last row based on this as i need to loop through all these items i need to make sure that we got the last row in this case it is 12. so it's based on column j if for some reason the last row is less than eight there have been no items added so we're going to let the user know to make sure to add at least one item before saving the list we can exit out of the sub okay next up what i want to do is i want to determine has this list been saved or not we would know this because there's going to be a database row that is associated with this list if b3 is empty we know it has not been previously been saved so that's going to help us b3 is going to tell us that it is because this macro is both used for saving a brand new one or updating an existing one if b3 equals empty we know it is a brand new list if it's a new list we must assign it a brand new row that first available row which is row seven here on our shopping list database okay so it's going to get that first row we're going to put it into a long variable called list row i also want to take that next available list id located right here in b2 and i'm going to place that directly inside column a in our first row available so that's what we're going to do right here shopping list a and the list row value equals b2 that is that list id but what if it's an existing list all we need to do is extract the row from b3 if it's an existing list then we're going to use data mapping data mapping is relatively simple i'm going to take whatever's in j3 of this sheet here and i'm going to place it directly inside column b and whatever row whatever's in j4 j5 m3 and so we're simply going to take whatever values are in those and place them in the row associated and that's all we're going to do so we're going to run a loop from two to column six just right here so from two to six 
we're going to take whatever's inside the range here inside row one here of the list column and we're going to place it directly inside the existing row and the existing column simply running a loop and that's simply going to save the data to the database save to database that's it for the list information but what about all the list items for the list items i need to run a loop right here starting with the first eight all the way to the last row and i'm going to check inside column n if n contains a value that's going to be associated with the database and that means it's already been previously saved to this database however if it's empty it has not been saved and i'm going to create a brand new row right here and put the information in so that's exactly what we're going to do here so for the list item row eight to the last row we're running a loop through all of the items inside the list here if n is empty it's going to be a new item database row okay so the item database row is going to be that first available row based on our list items database i'm going to take that database and i'm going to put it directly inside column n so it's going to go right here or here or here i'm going to put that right here and you'll see that appear when we run this macro next up also for new items i want to take that list id and locate it in b2 that's very important because that's going to tell vba that only this particular list number is associated with this item and we're going to put that in column a so that id is going to go directly here next up i want to put the date and the item id so if we take a look inside our vba here inside column i and j only for new items i want to put the associated row so if we take a look here column i is going to take on that list row column j is going to take on a formula to set that database row so column i is going to take on that list item row column j is going to take on the formula that will set that row if it's an existing item all we need to do is extract the row from column n so if it's an existing it's already been saved that row is going to be here all i need to do is take that row and put it into a long variable called item database row okay next up what i want to do is i want to save the information i want to save that as i mentioned before b is going to take on that list date that list date is located right here in j4 i want to place that directly inside column b next up everything we can do in a single line from c all the way through h is simply equal to whatever is located here in h all the way over through m so that's relatively easy and we can do that in a single line of code c through h is equal to h through m very very easy there so that simply saves whatever's in h through m it's going to put it directly in c through h okay very good so that's it and we just have to loop then we're going to run a fade out message and that's just simple fade out message that is going to have a shape and then it's going to disappear and i'm going to show you exactly so when we save this list I'm going to put those database we're going to have that fade out message notice how it's saved let's try that again you see the database rows have been assigned 32 through 36 if we look inside our database we see 32 through 36 our items have been saved our shopping list database now contains list id number four with our market and our date and our notes and our list total and our purchase total okay very very good that's nice so next up in our macro that's going to be both for save and update and next up we're going to do the list load this uh fit out message simply just runs a timer and fades out the shape and then it disappears list load when do we want to run this load well when i run previous or next i want to run the list load and basically what we're going to do with these macros which we're going to get to in a moment i'm going to take the next list id or the previous list id and i'm going to place it directly here so for example if i were to do this right placing it we'd set the row then we're going to run the macro that's going to load that list so all we need to do is set the list id here and it's going to run that macro so notice it loaded a brand new one so how do we load that new first of all we need to make sure that we have a database row associated with the list id if there's no row then we can exit the sub so if b3 equals empty we're going to let the user to please select a correct shopping list we're going to turn application screen updating to false that's going to make things a lot quicker inside our long variable we're going to put whatever's in b3 that is our list row i'm going to clear out a bunch of fields associated with any previous shopping list that might be there so we're going to clear out all these fields here and all these fields here not the total of course and we then run a loop now when i run a loop we're going to use data mapping i'm going to then bring in this information back into our form except not list total and not purchase total why not these because these are calculated right i already have a formula that's going to handle these i don't need to bring this value here or here because the formula is going to take care of that for me just fine so this time 
we are running data mapping loop, but only from two to four. So really column B through D, and that's all we need. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. From two to four, we're going to take whatever's inside the list row and the list column, and we're gonna put it directly in this range. What is that range? It's J3, it's J4, or it's J5. That's it, very simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the list items. I need to know all the list items associated with list ID four or list ID three. So to do that, again, we need to run an advanced filter. So we have our shopping list database and we need to run a criteria. I want to know only those items that are associated with a given order. So we need to set a criteria. And that criteria is right here called list ID. This is linked to B2 in the shopping list, which is our list ID. If we remember correctly inside our shopping list, B2 contains that ID. If I know that list ID, I can then run an advanced filter and return only those items that are associated with that given shopping list. And I'm gonna place those from QR through W. So that's exactly what we're going to do. First of all, we're gonna determine the last row based on our list items database, based on this database here. And we want to make sure that there is data. If not, we're gonna exit out. We're gonna run that advanced filter from A3 through J. And we're gonna run the criteria N2 through N3, and the results are gonna come Q2 through W2. Okay, great. Our last results row, column Q. If it's less than three, we're gonna exit the sub. We're gonna run a loop for the results to the last results row. So I need to run a loop from this all the way to the last row. I need to know what list row to place it on. Are we placing on row eight, nine, 10, or what row? And that means what row are we placing it on here? Eight, nine, 10, okay. So I need to know what row, that's very important. So we're gonna extract that out into a variable. So that list row is gonna come directly from column W here. So we put that into column W. Next up, what I wanna do is again, all we need to do is just take all the items in the associated row all the way to price here from Q through U is gonna go directly inside columns h all the way through l so we can do that with a single line of code here h through l and the list row equals q and the result will through u okay so that's the main items the last thing is i need to place that database row in column n so in column m it's going to come directly from column v so that's the last thing we have to do so n in the list row simply equal to v in the result row and that is our item database and that's it we just close our loop so we can turn on application screen updating Great, so very good. So that's how we load it. We're gonna to get to previous and next. So basically, all we need, when we do the previous and next, it is going to change the number here. So if we change this to two, I'm just going in order, and then we run the macro here, and we can see that it loads up. Okay, very good. Next up, delete. If I wanna delete an order, I can do just that. Let's go ahead and create a brand new order, and then we're gonna delete it. We create a new order. We can just create a test, and then put a date in here. Okay, and then we'll add some items here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to save this list. Now I wanna delete this list. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure if it's been saved, I need to know what row to delete here. And I also need to know what items to delete. I need to know that only those items for shopping list number five must be deleted. So we're gonna run an advanced filter. Those results are gonna come up here. Then I'm gonna extract the database rows which need to be cleared out. I'm gonna clear that out and then I'm gonna resort the list. So this is how we're going to do that. So first of all, we're gonna say, are you sure you wanna delete the shopping list? If no, we're gonna simply exit the sub. If B3 is empty, then we know it has not yet been saved, right? If I add a new one and I don't save it yet, B3 is gonna be empty. If it is empty, then there's no databases to delete and we can skip that action. So if B3 equals empty, we're gonna set that up right here. We can go to not save, it's gonna skip it right down to here. Okay, next up, if it has been saved, I can take that database row and put it into a variable here. And then within the shopping database, I can delete the entire row. Okay, so that's gonna delete it. But now we need to focus on the items. I need to clear out and delete the individual items associated with that shopping list. So focusing on the list items database, setting the last row, we're gonna run again another advanced filter exactly like we did with the same criteria, getting the same results here. So there's no difference. N2 is our criteria, Q2 through W2 is our results. We're gonna determine the last row of the results. If it's less than three, we're gonna skip down here and go to no items, although it should never be. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a loop for the result row equals to the last result row. So basically we're running a loop all the way down. I'm gonna look for the database row. Once it's found, I'm going to then clear the contents of it. So it's gonna create a blank row. So we're gonna do that here. So the item database row 
is based on column V and the result row. So that is our item database row. Then we're going to use clear contents. We're not going to delete the row. The reason we don't delete the row, let's say I'm running through this loop and I need to delete row seven. If I delete entire row seven, it's going to mess with this. We're running a loop. So we shouldn't delete it, right? Because it's going to mess with these results here. So what I want to do is I want to clear the contents out and then I want to resort the list based on the ID. So we're clearing the contents out from column A through J. Then deleting creates issues with the results. So we're not going to do that. Now we've run the loop. We've cleared out. We've removed all the associated list rows. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run a sort. So we're going to focus on the sort, clearing that sort, and the list item database basing on A4. We're going to sort it ascending based on that list ID. And I want to include the range A4 through all the way through J in the last results row. That's going to make sure to include the range, okay? And we're going to apply the sort. That's it. So if, let's take a look at that. So if I go into the shopping list here, and I want to delete this test order, and I click delete, we're going to get that. Are you sure you want to delete that? Yes. So it's going to delete. It's going to add new. Okay, we're going to take a look at this. There's no longer five here. We're going to look at our list items. There's no more five here. We see the results of the five came here. And it deleted rows 37 and 38 and 37 and 38 and cleared out. Okay, then it resorted the list, which is probably not necessary because those were the last two items, but it would still work just fine. Okay, great. So we've seen how we added new list, save list, delete list. We want to print the list and then we want to go to previous and next. Next up is print. So printing is relatively easy. We know the range is going to start in I. And we know the last range is going to be the last row. But of course, I want to determine the last row so that I know what range to print. So the last row is variable, so it's going to be based on column J. So the first thing what we want to do is that last row based on column J, and it's going to determine the last row. Then we're going to set that print area. It's going to start in I3, and it's going to go all the way through M in the last row. So I3 through M in the last row. That's going to set that print area using page setup, print area equals that print. So it's going to set that print area. And then we just need to use the print out. We don't need to preview it. And that's it. So it's relatively easy on that. Now we have previous and next to the last two macros. However, before we get to that, I want to hide this information. So I'm going to hold down the control and I'm going to hold down the control again. This is informational and we do not need the end user to see it. So we want to easily hide it. We can use formatting to do that. We can use a custom format. So we're going to go into more number formats. And because they're only numbers that we're trying to hide, I'm going to use two semicolons. If it was numbers in text, I would use three semicolons. We're going to click OK, and that's going to hide it there. Remember, I said we we're going to find that number, but it's going to be hidden. Now, if we click on it, we see the numbers are still there. However, it is not visible for the end user. OK, perfect. We're going to save our work. Now, what we want to do is I want to navigate. So I want to go to previous all the way to the first one. And when we're at the first one, I want this to say you were at the first shopping list. When it comes to next, I want to navigate to the next one until we are at the last shopping list. So how can we do that? Well, essentially, all we need to do is reduce this number. However, if they get deleted, we need to look for the next lowest number. Because, for example, we may have deleted list ID 4, we may have 5, and we may have 3, but 4 may be gone. So what we need to do is we need to check for that. So with the previous, we're going to determine if B2 is empty. Why would B2 empty? It might be empty if it's a new list or something like that. We want to just set it to the last available ID. Then we're going to run the list. Load. Remember, all we need to do is change B2 to whatever's the last one. We're going to use the max function. And that means I'm going to take all the list IDs and I'm going to look for the highest one of value. So for example, if for some reason this was empty, let's delete it and I use previous, it's going to go to the last greater one, which was four. So what we're going to do is we're going to look up the maximum number, the last one, which is four, and I'm going to place that directly inside the shopping list. And then we're going to run the macro that we already went over called list load. So B2 is going to take on the highest ID and then we're going to run it. Okay, so then what I'm going to do, if I've covered that area, only when B2 is empty, the list ID is based on B2. I want to check to make sure to see if it's found. I want to know what row the current ID is found on. Just in case there's nothing found here, I want to double check through VBA. So we can use the find to do that based on the list ID. And we're going to look up that list ID. Okay. If the list ID is minimum, let's say we've deleted list ID one, but we only have two left. Two would be the minimum. If we're at that minimum already, then we need to let the user know. If the list ID equals the minimum, using minimum function of the list ID, this is our named range, we're looking for the minimum value, you are at the first shopping list, and we can exit the sub. If the list row is zero, 
then existing not found we didn't find it we're going to set b2 I'm just going to set it to the last one available and load the list if the list row is four so we're just checking all these conditions to make sure they're at the first one if their list row is four meaning here is our list row four that's the first one also and if it is we're also going to let them know that they are at the first shopping list okay as long as they're not at the first one we can then simply determine b2 is going to be the shopping list list row minus one so whatever that list row is minus one so basically if the list row is five we're going to set the list row to four once i know the list row we can set the value in a which is going to be the previous id list row minus one so for example if this is the list row here and the previous id is here and once i take that one i'm going to put it directly inside b2 and then i'm going to run the macro to list load next is almost exactly the same we're going to check to see if it's empty meaning there's no value on two i want to set it to the first one so for example if there's no value for some reason and the user decides that we're going to go next it's going to go automatically to that first value which is id one so to do that if b2 is empty we're going to simply set b2 to the minimum id the lowest id possible the first list id in the list then we're going to run the macro and exit the sub Okay, we're going to set the list id again at b2 we're going to check for the row want to make sure that i know the row we can use the find we can also use the row that's associated right here in b3 but in case that's empty i want to then use vba to check for that if the list id is based on the maximum if it's already on the max in other words if the list id is four we're already at the max we need to let the user know that we're already at the max one and to give them a message box that looks like this you're at the last shopping list so that's what we want to do okay very good if for some reason the list is zero no existing we can just simply set it to the last one available using the max inside b2 so that's just going to set to the highest value if it's not already the highest value all we need to do is locate that list row and then add one so we locate the list row here then what we're going to do is we're going to add one so a plus one is going to take on that number right here inside b2 and so we're simply going to add that and then run the macro to list load very cool well that was really fun we were able to show you how we can create unique categories from a list how we can select on those categories and create a very unique list of subcategories selecting on them changing the color of the shapes as we select them when we do select them it creates a list of unique items when we select those items it changes the color of the selected item and adds or updates an item on the list likewise we can also add an item or update an item by selecting it or simply typing it in would also work as well also we were able to add a new list save the list delete list print it and navigate in our patreon update make sure you check us out for that i'm going to be adding a mini dashboard here so we have some space this is a hundred percent right here so i've got some space i want to know uh all the shopping that we've done in the current month or the current year are we at a budget maybe we can set a budget i have so many ideas when we select an item i want to be able to remove an item from this list so that's some more of those ideas all that's going to be happening on patreon what about your ideas what would you like to see on this i have lots of ideas but i'd love to hear from you go ahead and comment below wherever you're seeing this video feel free to email me let me know what you like to see whether you're on youtube silver or patreon silver or gold i'll be sending you the update through that so make sure you sign up on our patreon thank you so much and we'll see you next week